I'm currently on the beautiful shores of Lake Champlain, uh, right now on the Vermont side of the lake, but just across the way um, is, is my home in New York. Now, the ground I'm standing on is called Larrabee's Point, which has um, an important history of transportation and trade here in the Champlain Valley. Now, to my right, there is a ferry docking station. Um, and even though this ferry is closed in the wintertime, it has been uh, transporting goods uh, and passengers uh, from one side of the lake to the next since its first chartering in 1799. Now, the building behind me here was built originally by John Larrabee um, as, a, as a warehouse to help facilitate trade uh, here in the Champlain Valley. Now, from this position on the southern end of Lake Champlain, we have trade access to major cities along the lake, such as Vergennes, Burlington, Plattsburgh, even cities in Canada, such as Champlain, St. John's, uh, Montreal, and Quebec, um, through access of the uh, St. Lawrence River. But also, just about three to four miles away, uh, accessed by a short portage, we also have access to Lake George. And in 1823, when the Champlain Canal is finished, which connected Lake Champlain to the Hudson River, the southern end of Lake Champlain would be connected with the Hudson, making uh, uh, travel to places like Albany and New York City uh, easily available. Now, this means that this, this spot on Lake Champlain is really economically advantageous. Now, just across the lake um, is the re reconstruction of Fort Ticonderoga, which was originally built in 1755 for some of the same reasons that Larrabee's Point is here. This position on the lake uh, allows uh, whoever's here to control the trade um, and the access of, of commercial goods up and down the lake. As you can imagine, in the 18th century and the early 19th century, these waterways were the highways of the United States. These lakes and rivers uh, connected these vast networks uh, of colonies and then states, which helped to facilitate trade uh, during the early uh, uh, federal period uh, or the early republic. Now, this three-story stone structure behind me is the original warehouse um, constructed here at Larrabee's Point in 1823 uh, by John Larrabee to help facilitate trade here um, at Larrabee's Point. Now, today this building is used as a residential structure, but it has some interesting history. When it was originally constructed, many of the stones that were used to build this uh, structure were actually taken from the ruins of Fort Ticonderoga just across the lake. Many of the cut limestone uh, pieces were taken directly from the ruins of the stone barracks buildings um, inside of the grounds of Fort Ticonderoga. Travel between the New York and Vermont sides of the lake has always been important, and the area around Larrabee's Point and Fort Ticonderoga have often been used as a connection point. This image from 1777 shows British soldiers crossing Lake Champlain north of the fort roughly in the vicinity of Larrabee's Point. In 1776, a bridge was built just south of the point that connected the Ticonderoga Peninsula with Mount Independence. As part of the American defenses, this bridge was destroyed in 1777 by the British Army under General John Burgoyne. Thomas Rowley was one of the first white settlers to establish himself on the point, which was originally named Rowley's Point after him. After the Revolution, John Larrabee purchased the property in 1787, renaming it Larrabee's Point and establishing a tavern as well. In 1789, Alexander and George Trimble established the first store on the point. This store primarily benefited from the lumber trade as a result of land clearing to the east where towns like Shoreham within Addison County were developing during the 1790s. In 1799, John Larrabee filed for a charter with the state of Vermont that gave him the exclusive rights to own and operate a ferry from this point. Since most trade goods in the area were transported by boat on Lake Champlain, the ferry proved to be an economic success as it tied the local economy of Larrabee's Point and Shore in Vermont to the wider trade networks of the Champlain Valley. By the 1820s, trade in the region was booming. 
a quarry opened near Larrabee's Point in 1826 that found the only source of black marble in the entire United States at the time, which fueled the Middlebury marble industry in local Middlebury, Vermont. Marble being produced in Middlebury and Virgins was being shipped throughout the country, primarily with the help of the Champlain Canal, which connected Lake Champlain to the Hudson River, completed in 1823, as well as the Erie Canal, which connected the Hudson with Western New York and the Great Lakes. These series of canals connected the raw materials from upstate New York and Vermont with national markets. These raw materials were being funneled through places like Albany and New York City and being shipped as far south as places such as Georgia. The innovation of the steamboat was also an early arrival to the Champlain Valley. The Vermont, a steamboat owned by John and James Winans, had begun making trips up and down Lake Champlain between 1808 to 1809 only one to two years after Robert Fulton's steamboat, the Clement, made its way between Albany and New York. The Vermont is even perhaps the first steamboat worldwide to operate on a lake. After the War of 1812, the use of steamboats on Lake Champlain and Lake George heavily increased, furthering the economic success of water-based trade in the Champlain Valley. This engraving was published in 1818 by Gideon Fairman, but it was based off of a sketch by Hugh Reinigal uh, that was done circa 1815. Not only is it the first depiction of the ruins of Fort Ticonderoga, but it also depicts a small steamboat in the bottom right-hand corner that's slightly obscured by the trees that are behind it. Now, even as early as 1815, steam vessels like this one uh, would have been prominent on Lake Champlain uh, as a vessel of trade. Originally, I had thought that this view was actually from the perspective of Larrabee's Point, and I was even hopeful that this uh, small rowboat here could have actually uh, been part of uh, Larrabee's Ferry. Um, however, going back and looking at the uh, geographical perspective, I think this is actually uh, slightly further south than Larrabee's Point and probably closer to the vicinity of Mount Independence on the Vermont side of the lake. So now we're on the New York side of the lake at the Ticonderoga Ferry, just opposite Larrabee's Point. You can still make out that three-story stone structure from here, built in 1823, uh, that is today used as a residential home. Now, today, Larry's Point doesn't look like much. Um, since the 19th century, its economic importance has deteriorated, but originally in the early and mid, and even late 19th century, Larry's Point would have been a, a bustling wharf um, and docking area for trade vessels on Lake Champlain. Now, the development of infrastructure such as Larrabee's Point Ferry, the Champlain Canal, of course the Erie Canal, as well as the development of steamboats on Lake Champlain was really important for the economic development of this area. It connected markets of raw materials such as lumber as well as finished goods uh, such as wool and marble uh, to wider national markets. By the 1830s, Middlebury Marble was shipping out finished marble fireplaces all throughout the country, even as far south as Augusta, Georgia. Much of that is thanks to the trade facilitated by many of these uh, infrastructural uh, bases. Larrabee's Point continued to prosper through the lake trade until the 1840s when the railroads began being chartered in Vermont and New York. The innovation of the railway made lake trade almost obsolete. Yet the lake trade still existed, and Larrabee's Point would continue to be a place where steamboats would dock and exchange goods through the late 19th century. Thanks to an elegant hotel built here in 1847 called the United States Hotel, or the Lake House, this place continued to be a tourist destination until the hotel burned down around 1915. Despite the ups and downs, the ferry here between Ticonderoga and Larrabee's Point has been in operation ever since John Larrabee originally chartered it in 1799. Even though the innovation of the railway severely shifted the economic prospects of lake trade, 
Larrabee's point helped contribute to the economic prosperity of early Vermont and the Champlain Valley, as well as the expansion of national markets during the early republic.